What is the purpose of God's law? What is law and why does man have laws? What makes a law godly? Is there a connection between the laws of God and the laws of man? What happens when that connection is distorted or perverted? What does the existence of law say about the nature and essence of God himself? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Let's join uh, our discussion as we stray further every day. Howdy, Jonathan Fiala for Further Every Day here, and I'm joined by a full panel. How's it going, Miss Nikki? It's going very well. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Glad to have you there in the chair of theology. I'm glad to be here. And uh, yours truly, Jonathan Fiala, sitting in the chair of philosophy and uh, host, but downstream of philosophy and theology is culture. How's Charlie? I am wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad to have you there. And uh, downstream of that is politics. How goes it, Steve? goes fantastic today man praise stepping God. outside walking on down and being politically incorrect like normal i would and expect, loving every bit of it i would expect living the dream less. living the dream outside Always. the box outside, outside the, the box <laughs> man outside the law oh wait 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 okay okay so not outside the law <laughs> let's talk outside about it. the box but we will talk about the law so Let's kind of start, just dive right in. So it, it, what is the purpose of law? And there are three purposes of law in, in God's economy. I think you can kind of sum it up that way. Miss Nikki, do you, do you remember what, what, what we laid out for that? Or do you want me to go ahead and jump in? Well, I know the first one was, to. it's a mirror. It's looking into the law so you can see, do I reflect that? Am I looking like Christ? by examining the law. That was number one. Uh, number two was uh, to prevent evil. And the law is established to prevent men from doing evil, uh, to protect society, to protect individuals. And the third one, um, you might have to help me with this. Serves as a revelation of God's heart. Mm. True. Yes. And so, and that's where we want to go today. And so we, we think of law as something that is somehow meant to harm us, hamper us. Like when you hear law. Negative connotations. What is the first thing that happens? Like in your soul, do you get a little bit of a, um, a tightening, a bit of a, a consternation? Maybe apprehension. Yeah. Nervousness. Um, may, the, the flags go up. Right. Um, I mean, there's just a, a number of different things that you can think about. If you, and what's really ironic about this is that if you are not a lawbreaker, if you will, can I say it like that? Mm -hmm. You might not have those, those apprehensions because there's a freedom. Well, and you know, this is, this is true. Uh, what you're saying also, it depends, I think, how you are, are raised to think of it, um, what the law, is the law something that hurts you? I mean, in the 50s, in the 60s, in a black neighborhood, it was, you know. Uh, the law was meant to harm you. Yes, yes. And in many police and departments and police officers and, and things did harm um, our black citizens of yeah. America. It's, that's very true. But... My mom, the law was also a protection to protect you, you know, to protect your property, to protect your, your being. So you can look at it different ways. And a lot might have to do with in the home that you're raised in. And on a political standpoint, um, stepping outside the box and being politically incorrect here, um, <clears throat> some laws are against the Constitution and... Uh, a lot of some things that I get on and I do a lot of reading on, like uh, Second Amendment laws, mm -hmm. gun laws, for instance. I'm a big proponent on the Second Amendment mm -hmm. and First Amendment. And there are things that are being passed right now and that have been passed to circumvent that are against people who, um, how I want to say, um, 
not in the in crowd and there's laws that are right. unjust weights that are being measured and 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 to your point Stephen Crowder, and I want your reaction to this real quick. Stephen Crowder says it really well when he says it this way. He says, you don't live in a free country if you have laws. You live in a free country, perhaps, if all the laws are applied evenly. Mm. And that's, that's That's an right. interesting th thought that, there. That's and if thought. you look at some, and let's look at right now, there are some that are a specific person that is going far to court on a law that they broke for buying a gun because they were on drugs and wrote on their form that they didn't and my bet is is he will get off scot-free because of who he is yep so now that we kind of you know it around a little bit we we have three three points to cover in the chair of theology today is going to be a theology heavy day but the first thing that the law does in the bible is that it serves as a mirror now that, that that's kind of a weird phrase and some folks who are listening might be saying well how exactly does the law function as a mirror what is the purpose of that phrase in the bible miss nikki um so we're going to go to james 1 23 and in James 1 23, it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight, straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? That First off, when we say looking into a glass, back in, in ancient times, what did they use for mirrors? You know, I'm not really sure what they used for mirrors. So they, they would use either a piece of metal or they would use a piece of glass and, the, and they'd okay. have something a behind looking it. Glass. Uh, okay. looking yeah. glass. A lot of yeah. high-polished bronze. Yeah, and so okay. those were the options, right? And so they would be looking into the mirror. So basically. So basically, let's say that this is my Bible mm -hmm. and I'm reading it and it says, thou shall not lie. Well, okay, so I'm looking at my face and I'm saying, did I lie? Oh, wait a minute. I, I didn't. I lied to my mother yesterday. So the Bible says I should not lie. Do I need to go make that right? Or am I just going to walk away and forget about it? The Bible talks about being a discerner in thoughts of, of in intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a reflection of what you're thinking, what you're doing. Well, yeah, and it, I, it should, if the Holy Spirit is present in my life and it says, thou shalt not lie, and now I realize that I lied, I should have a heaviness within my heart, a conviction. If I have no heaviness in my heart and no conviction, um, there's no presence of the Holy Spirit. You've been shown that you've had a, you're having a bad hair day. Yep. You can see that you look like a mess. You, you, you look like a liar because you are a liar. So let's say that that's, for example, what the, what the scripture is showing you this morning that you have lied. And then you look into that, you see that reflection, you know that you look like a mess. You're having a bad hair day. If you go outside and you act like you are not a liar, you are not having a bad hair day. Everyone else can see it. You don't. And you are yeah. acting the part of the mm -hmm. fool. And I can justify my lie. I really wanted that cookie. She said I couldn't have a cookie. And I don't want to take that cookie. And when she asked yes. me about it, I told her no. But I'm justified because I was hungry. So let's pull this biblical concept because as you're going to see today dear viewer we're, we're going to try to lay this out and say that there is a just re there is a just law and there's a moral law there is a metaphysical set of laws and we're going to talk about that the laws of god some of those are in Im more immutable than the law second law of thermodynamics the law of entropy mm -hmm. is more unchanging than that we're going to talk about that but some of these laws are also meant to provide a guideline, a rail, so that you can see what reality is. And when laws don't reflect reality as it is, we have a problem. Yes. And so the law is meant to be a mirror. 
Let's go to an example of a law that is reflecting reality. Let's talk about murder. Mm -hmm. Life for life. If you're in mm -hmm. a death penalty state, you're mm -hmm. saying there's a reality yeah. that you have consequences. You have taken this person's life. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that is not replaceable. Right. It is done. It is gone. So something irreplaceable, no time in jail can account for that. That's the philosophy behind the death penalty. Correct. It is that there is no restitution possible for that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a reflection of reality. Now, Romans uh, 3.20, I think, also has an interesting piece on this. As far as the law being a mirror, it's helping us see who we are and what reality is. So that says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Hmm. So why did we throw that verse in there? What is, what is that saying about law? Law can only do one thing. It can point out in humans, it can show the reality that humans cannot keep, give them one law. They can't, well, we, that goes back to the Garden of Eden. They only had one it, law it, and they couldn't keep that law. Exactly. It I was goes, teeing up Charlie. It there. goes back it, all oh, the way I to apologize. the book of no, Genesis. No, no, it's good. I'm glad you jumped, but I was teeing but up Charlie. Read, read the verse again. Romans uh, 3.20? Yes, please. Okay, Romans 3.20 is... Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Really super important point here to be made. There is no law justified in his sight. Man... Man cannot be the maker of law. There'll be no flesh justified in the sight. Yeah. Right. So when you when you look at man and his desire to create laws, it's really not a good starting point. It's a it's a it's a faltered uh, starting point because the law is already it, it's already it's already coming from a corrupt being. Maybe maybe that's a better way to put that, because. Go ahead. I'm just asking. I'm going to ask this question to see if I'm off track here. So when man is trying to create a law, based on his oh sorry, my R.I.P. His, those with headphones. <laughs> his human flesh. I was born this way. Therefore, this sh this law should protect me for being born this way. But it's kind. You know, contrary to the law of God, is that what we're saying here? Is that um, I don't know. I don't That's not lost. where I'm going. I'm I'm going from okay. the perspective of when we we talk about law, where does it come from? Um, it you want when we drink water, what kind of water do we want to drink? Clean. Here, clean. we we want pure. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. So if I'm going to grab water from somewhere, what what are my sources? Mm -hmm. What must I know about the source? Whether it's clean. pure. It's in got origin. to be pure and clean. So the point that I'm trying to make here, especially from Romans 3.20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Well, unfortunately, man is the one that started sin. So man is out. Mm -hmm. A sinner making laws for sinners it, so, it doesn't yeah. work you know well I mean? so and, and that's all i'm talking so about. there has yeah. to be an origin and that comes back to my original point of laws must reflect reality as it is if they do not yeah. reflect reality as it is and so then there comes the question how do i find that north star of reality there you go and what the law does is it gives you that reflection Mm -hmm. And another way to say it is the law is a reflector. It is a indicator of reality. That's the point that yeah. I think is important is yeah. that the law is an indicator of reality. And in the Bible, 
we see that it says that we are sinful beings. In reality, in the day-to-day -day life, you break on average as a statistically. Today, in this room, there will be 28 felonies committed. Statistically speaking today, the average person, I believe it is seven felonies a day, the way the law is laid out. Wow. So that's just statistically speaking. I'm not saying that that's representative of what's going to happen in, today. In, wow, you in America, in, in our city, or just in in America? the federal in the federal uh, uh, law pantheon of of crazy laws that are just insane. There's a huge amount of laws. Each one of right. us statistically is breaking seven federal felony statutes a day. It seemed like it I'm would gonna, be more than that. I'm going to give really? a spoiler yeah, true. for all the listeners and viewers. So you really should become a super listener. And some of you already know what that is. Some of you don't. You should pay attention today because John Arthur is going to ask a really interesting question at the very end. What is one of your favorite weird laws on the books today? I have one. So, yeah, I've got several. End, and, I, okay. and, and I was thinking about... It really fits well with what you just said. And so let's say that there's a set of laws that we don't even know think about. about. Yeah. Think about, know about, et cetera. Right. What if those laws are not something that is punitively laid out by a capricious God? Spoilers a little bit. What if instead we are so blissfully ignorant of reality as it truly is that there's no way that we can live in a universe coexist with this being of fire and holiness and righteousness. Yep. Just, just put that in your cap for a moment. But what was the purpose of the Old Testament law? Well, the law was our schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. So in Galatians 3, 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith but after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So I'll go one more. For as many of you has been, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Hmm. So there's a beauty there with the Holy Spirit's work. Mm -hmm. I like to think of the Holy Spirit as the truancy officer. What was the purpose of the truancy officer? What is the purpose of the truancy officer? Bring you you still school. have them. That's right. If you're not mm -hmm. in school, I'm coming to find you. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to take you back to the school. The school. I'm going to take you back to the teacher. When Unconstitutional, you think, by the way. But anyway, keep yeah, going. Well, <laughs> duly noted. Okay. <laughs> Just but keep going. The, the point of the, the issue is this. When the Holy Spirit is at work and we look at the word, Okay, so we find out there's conviction. What did the Holy Spirit just do? You need to go back to the teacher. What's the teacher? The Word. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Word is going to tell us where we've messed up and what we need to fix, what mm -hmm. we need to do. I, I, I love and we're, laying that out there. And where reality breaks down, let's take this to the everyday reality, where reality breaks down. And then, and, and then I want to go to metaphysical for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, but and, and I'm going to reinforce this. I'm going to back this up. Okay? okay, receipts coming. But when reality breaks down in the realm of what's just, if I think or perspective breaks down, that's where I want to go. If perspective breaks down, if my perspective is that that light was red and it was green. Mm. And I go into the intersection and someone hits me because I was in the intersection when it was the wrong time to be there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. It doesn't matter what my perspective was. Right. Okay. If I think I justly harmed someone and reality says, no, what you did was unjust, you must be punish you must be brought back into reality that's what laws do mm. they ground society in reality they can't fix the woes of society god's law can't fix the woes of the soul but it shows us it alerts us 
to that. And in that way, the law of the Lord is pure, perfect. It is pure. It is reassuring, as the psalmist says. It is beautiful in that way because it is mm -hmm. given in love. You know, uh, Teller, what, or was it Teller or, or Gillette, was the one who said, how unloving must you be to believe that there is an eternity of heaven and hell and not attempt to proselytize me an atheist, mm -hmm. right? So the law is given by a loving God. So yep. the law serves as that mirror, that reflection of reality, that understanding of reality. What else does the law does do? What else does the law do? Jeez. It restrains evil. Correct. So what is a good, well, here, I'll jump in and then I'll, 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 I'll offer this. Leviticus 19. Do y'all feel like Leviticus 19 is a good grab bag for us to look at as far as laws? Absolutely. What kind of laws do you guys remember out of Leviticus 19 off the top of your head? Well, I'm thinking the Ten Commandments. Well, uh, Leviticus is that, 19 is not is not Ten not Commandments. There. What you have, you're thinking Exodus, and, and, oh, and you're warm on Exodus. Bad. But Le Leviticus 19, you had a whole bunch of commandments, including not to wear two pieces of cloth that are sewn into the same garment, because those mm. would stretch, and they would shift, and they would break, okay? Because you would be in this hot, arid environment, and things would change. But you would also have laws in regards to health code you would also have laws that were related to uh leprosy you also had mm -hmm. laws related to homosexuality you also had so it was this weird grab bag and you can kind of go through it and you can see that there are a number of laws that are all listed in leviticus 19 and if you go further through leviticus and uh, numbers you'll find a whole set of laws for leprosy can I, and uh, for mold. Can I just read a few of these? Go I mean, for it. very, really quickly. Uh, I'm just going to start from Leviticus 19.19. 19. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Hello. That's a pretty important law. By the way, I think one of the moves that uh -huh. is being made in the, in the world. <laughs> moves. Uh, oh, do you like that? I like that. Uh, one of the moves being made in the world on the issue of the, the gender stuff um, is going to be with animals. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's it, already no. happening. Let me keep going. Uh, thou shalt not sow thy field with uh, mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. I'm just going to read a couple more here. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, betrothed to an husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And he shall bring his tr trespass offering. Uh, let me go down and get you one more here. Uh, but in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord. Um, with all in the fifth year shall you eat of the fruit thereof. I mean, there is a lot of different law in here Yep, that is happening. And, and can the I just, whole Levitical. Can I just say is, this? You're talking about a the is the children of israel who are coming out of egypt and who have been there for 400 years and have probably uh i won't say saturated into the culture but they have not been their own rulers for many years they they were enslaved they've done a lot of following yes and um so i can see you know we look at this and in a oh, wow this is kind of interesting weird yeah weird but at the same time where was the mindset of these children of Israel coming out of Egypt? You know, what, and we, we know by their sins, if you read further on, that um, they did have some issues. You know, I, I read a uh, um, archaeology report. I, I can't remember where it was at now, but the Egyptians are now saying that the Israelites were not in Egypt and did not spend 400 years there. And they, yeah, well, Egyptology is terrible. Exactly. Their, their take on all of that is Egyptology is, is, a, is, a, is a good bit of guesswork. 
It, but well, that's there. Yeah, it, it's uh, that we could get. That's a whole different rabbit hole there. So pulling back to <laughs> the the God of Law, which you guys do. <laughs> that was just a throw in on that. <laughs> <laughs> but you 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 said something important there, Miss Nikki. You said you have an issue with. Uh, they've been in the land of Egypt, the children of Israel for 400 years, and they have absolutely lost sight of who God is. So God is revealing himself and he's revealing himself through a number of things. He's revealing himself through health codes, through moral codes, and through uh, just a general understanding of, you know, there's a whole understanding of microbiology that they ha that they didn't understand microbiology, right. but they knew the practices around leprosy and uh, uh, around mold. And actually, I want to talk about leprosy for just a moment, because leprosy in the Bible, what is it often used to um, uh, symbol, symbol, uh, symbolize? There you go. What is leprosy often symbolized in the Bible? It's going to lead to death. It often symbolizes sin. sin. Yeah. And sin. there's a reason why it symbolizes sin. I took it too far. No, 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 it's okay. So I actually want to go ahead, link in the description below. Actually, so it's now called something called Hansen's disease. And so that's that's the name for it, leprosy, Hansen's disease. And it's a really interesting progression. It's not as uh, contagious as we used to think because it's an issue of sanitation. If you have good sanitation, leprosy is not going to be nearly the problem that uh, it was for the children of Israel. Now, I want to... And it's a big problem in India still because of their sanitation, sanitation problems, mm. especially their water that they a lot of them bathing. They're, they're bathing and bad. they're defecating in it. So yes. each year, up to 225 people in the U.S., 250,000 around the world, are diagnosed with Hansen's disease, known as leprosy. Uh, Hansen's disease was once feared as a highly contagious, devastating disease. Again, this is still from the CDC. Now we know that it's hard to spread and re relatively treatable. People with Hansen's disease can live an active life during and after the treatment. Now, what it is, is caused by a slow-growing bacteria called Myocobacterium leprae and Myobacterium lepromatosis. The disease can affect the nerves, skin, eyes, lining of the nose. In some cases, body parts may lose their sense to touch. That's important in a moment. And pain, increasing the likelihood of injuries such as cuts or burns. Despite the beat, disease being hard to catch and completely cure a lot of, uh, uh, and it's completely curable rather, a lot of stigma and prejudice remains around those who have Hansen's disease. Okay. And so some people would lose their digits. Well, because of all the damage that was done because you couldn't Correct. feel pain. So what, what, mm -hmm. where did it come from? Why did God have the clean laws? Oh, Oh, oh is, that was is a representation that getting leprosy. That was a well, just in general, good habits of cleanliness, right? Yep. Right. And so, when you got leprosy, not always, but a lot of the time, it was because you weren't following God's precepts and ordinances for cleanliness. Not always. The 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 uh, thing that you say, uh, cleanli cleanliness is next to godliness. There's a reason There's for that. There's a reason, you know, yeah. For that, for that work so that. that's what leprosy is. So let's think about that. It is an inward disease that is not apparent until you start to see signs mm -hmm. on the skin. Sur signs come forward, they surface. That's really interesting. Sin dwells in the heart mm -hmm. and it yes. incubates, mm -hmm. it cooks, and then it comes forward and yeah. it deadens your senses causing potential for loss of life and limb. It's interesting that God decided to use leprosy for that. My question is, and I asked this beforehand, do laws come from the mind of God or do laws come from the essence of God? And let me explain. Okay, let me explain. Does God arbitrarily create the universe and its laws or do these laws appear to have a representation of the heart, the mind, and the spirit of God? Answer to the first one? Sure. No. Not arbitrary. 
that it's not created arbitrarily. It is it's, done on purpose. There's a reason behind it, just like we discussed before. There's reasons for what he does. Charlie? Part, part of the essence of God. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's a, it's a... Remember what Jesus said, I came that you have life and have it more abundantly. I mean, God is about... Um, when he said, told Adam, he, go and uh, Multiple. prosper, multiply and prosper. Correct. And so the principles that are laid down for family, culture, society are for them to multiply, to go forward, but to be prosperous. God's principles are to help you to prosper. The problem is our flesh keeps getting in the way in what I want. That's a problem. It's a problem because I think what I want, I can still go forward and the have. Desires of the flesh. Yeah, I can still go and have everything that, you know, I can prosper. I can happiness. I can have this um, without the law. But let's say that you do have leprosy. What was another part of the law? What were you to do? Well, you were you were sent away. You, you were you separated. Couldn't, you couldn't touch them. You had to stay away. I want to say it was. Um, I want to say seven. No, 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 no. Not not for leprosy. It was an extended time. There was an extended time, and you could bring yourself back to the priest to see if you were clean. If there was an improvement, and you had to yell unclean, unclean. Yeah, unclean. Yeah, when you went through town, unclean, unclean to keep everybody away. And Correct. Now, is it is it because it was so contagious, or because it was that because contagious? because it was thought to be contagious? And here's the real here's the real reason: you have that bacteria, and if you are, um, there's a few ways that you can contract it, but you have to. It, it's really fluids, so it can be in theory. And some people are going dis- to disagree on this: fluid to fluid transmission. Yes, sex will do that. Uh, fluid to fluid transmission, if you are, you know, mm-hmm. you were going to yeah, have that. Yeah. And so that, a lot of people said it was an STD in that way. It, it is in the way of anything that's fluid to fluid transmission can be a, a an issue. But it's it's more than that. God was pr- creating this sort of thing, this sort of image. And I don't even think God created the image as much as it is a natural consequence. You don't follow my laws of cleanliness and these aren't laws that I just made up. These are, this is you being clean. This is how you don't get sick. Mm-hmm. Now you have a consequence. You are separated from other people. You are now separated. And you can only, until you submit and you clean yourself and your immune system has a chance to take over and rid yourself of the leprosy, then you can come back into the fold. But there is two there are rather two different individuals in the Bible who are accredited with speaking and the leprosy going away. Who's the least famous? Do y'all remember? Oh, um, I wanted Elijah. It was right? it was Elisha. Prophet, it was, it was Elisha. Prophet, yeah, it was Elijah. the prophet Elisha, Elisha with Naaman the Syrian seven times. And what did Naaman say? He said, "Aren't there cleaner rivers and?" In my country, mm-hmm. why do I come here to bathe in the dirty Jordan? Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and and so if we could stop there and just help listeners understand that when when we're talking about the issues of cleanliness at the time of the children of Israel, it was a real challenge. It was an unbelievable challenge. They didn't have the water systems that were providing like we would talked about earlier, pure water, clean water, things like that. So they're drinking from these things. When Naaman was told to go and dip himself seven times into the into the Jordan, that was lunacy in his eyes. That was absolute lunacy. And I, I totally get what he's thinking there. Yeah, and, but and you're talking about a prophet that yeah. has told you to do it. And, and it, why did he tell him to do it? And well, it's it's. What was the what was the purpose of dipping in the river seven seven times? Well, I think it was not just, once. That was just obedience. But I that, think that, it, that, 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 that's the, it. The key 
the key Obedient. was the she's not going to give it to you there john arthur sorry go ahead the key was the god of elisha was the true god and it didn't matter how dirty the water of jordan was i'm the true god i speak you obey you healed you're coming out of he was a man of means name yes. was well, uh, and he was he was um, comparing where he came from to where he was and god was showing doesn't matter and it's an issue of faith mm -hmm. it's an issue of obedience and and faith again a faith is a moral conviction a creed something that you've decided that you know it is now a core value you are moving forward on that because you know that it's true yes. well i'll tell you what i was at the headwaters of the jordan and in Caesarea Philippi. And I'll tell you what, those waters, crystal clear. Where it's coming out from under the mountain, I mean, it's like. Different time, different correct, time. Correct. Could but I, it was coming out from under the mountain. Oh, wow. Right there. Uh, bubbling. Probably living water. So. But right there where. The same place that um, Jesus and Peter was at where he told him about building the church on his rock and everything where he goes and mm -hmm. prays all the time. Same place. Interesting. So we have Naaman the Syri Syrian being healed by Elisha. Okay. There is a simple premise set forward. Do this be clean, be mm -hmm. healed. Who's the other individual in history who was able to speak and leprosy was gone? That was Jesus, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, yeah, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Did, yeah. He just so spoken. what did Jesus say in each of those cases? Well, your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. Be clean, be healed. You know, the, it's quite a picture when you're talking about the moment you found out that you had leprosy or somebody in your family found out you had leprosy, you were, you were pushed out, cast, cast away. away. And it's not the, and I know that sounds cruel, but I think the symbolism is as soon as sin is recognized, you are either going to repent or you are away from us mm -hmm. because we, your sin will bleed into the rest of us and could corrupt the rest. Of and us. the thing was, is they cast them off into what they called, a colony yeah. well, where all other people that mm -hmm. had leprosy lived yeah, and, and it, died. That's, that's where you yeah, stay. They could die. But when they were healed, they could come back in. So like, it's, it's well, the same as of a healed. Well, some back in that time, some of them, some of them did, some of them did. And then they could come back in, but some it's, it's, it's restoration. So it's just a symbolism of, Sin, repentance, restoration. But the only way that you could be healed is, is that you started to adhere to the clean the cleanliness law. codes, the law. <laughs> and so that brings right. us kind of back to the, 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 the crux of this. Why did God, did God create leprosy? And the no. answer is no. Mm -mm. He created a health standard to prevent against leprosy. Leprosy is not a thing. It is a lack of health. It is one of the many, your body is a set of information. When I say it's not a thing, leprosy happens. Noted, there's a bacteria and I agree. And we, but the thing is you have leprosy, you have leprosy and you have leprosy right now, quite <laughs> potentially, <laughs> but your system, because of, the clean, because of the cleanliness and because of everything else, it's in such a small dose. It would take a large dose to overwhelm your system and cause a problem. There has to be a place for it to fester and grow. And by the way, once that is allowed to grow, then it becomes dangerous to other people, okay? That is not something that God created. God created the information in the human body. And leprosy is a deviation. It is something imperfect that occurred from our sin. God does not create laws to harm or restrict us. He creates laws to protect us, and they come out of his nature of love and grace and kindness. And all you have to do is recognize reality, the law, and submit to reality that you have grace 
to submit to. Your reality is not based on what you think. So it's based on God himself. Mm. You must look at reality through the eyes of God. That's reality. Which is so difficult because as sinners, how do you, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I, I think what I really want people to understand with what I just said, we, it's interesting we were talking about this earlier in our Bible study, we were talking about the issue of claiming to be a victim. In whose eyes? Mm -hmm. Is it right for you to claim to be a victim? Are you justified in that? And so when it comes to reality, there is only one reality. You don't have a reality. You don't have a reality. You don't have a reality. There is one uh, reality I live in, based on uh, what God I live in meta, sees. man. I, I got yeah. metaverse. <laughs> so if there is a concrete reality and God built smooth, just kind of moving over to the chair philosophy here. Sure. I'm going to put this out. If there is a real concrete reality that God has created and it comes out of his nature and I'm going to get to that in a minute, there's a picture there that we should see in the laws of God. Mm -hmm. And so how important is the understanding of what law is to our worldview? Let me explain by a question. Is it possible that God laid out laws that are theological, natural, metaphysical, governmental, et cetera, so we can understand his essence, what he is as an entity? Because if God is unchanging, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, then that in of itself mm -hmm. is a law. Correct. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's more Most concrete, definitely. it's more immutable than, say, the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. Mm -hmm. It is more immutable. It is more real. It is more concrete. So if we consider the fact that God has laid out these laws and they come from a world that is not our own, these laws are something that are speaking to a realer reality than the one in which we sit we as Christians, as we gaze at those laws, we're like a blind man reaching out and touching the face of God, trying mm -hmm. to feel and caress the contours of his face. We are trying to understand and grasp and grapple with who is this person, this individual who is above anything that we can possibly grasp. The blind man who has never seen color has no grasp. But mm -hmm. they only have touch and hearing and the other senses. We don't have a full grasp, but we can reach out and we can look at the law of God mm -hmm. and attempt to understand what he is. And the truth is, this God is holy. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is fierce. He is intensity. He is a fiery holy, righteous God who has set up these laws. And the truth is, our coming in contact with him, what happened to every single prophet? Every single prophet who thought they saw the face of God, what did they say or do? The moment they saw him. They, dropped. They, their feet fell trembled. Down. And they said, woe is me. I am Just unclean. Unclean. I am undone. Mm -hmm. I will surely die. die. Yeah. They had that understanding. They know because they were looking at the law of God and they knew it's like just coming in contact, not because God was angry. They didn't see anger in, in any of these theophanies faces. Anytime that God was they, there. They saw how short they fell. And they knew. And they knew. How really real he is and yeah. how vain and, and vaporous our existence is before that God. So if we come to understand that God is giving us in his law a chance to touch mm -hmm. the contours of his face and see who he really is. Mm -hmm. Then we have the sobering understanding of what law is and what it should be. 
but what it has become is something entirely different. So I want to go over to the chair of culture mm -hmm. and I kind of want to just lay this out. How has the world and man twisted? Cause we, we alluded to this earlier. How has the law of God and just law in general been commingled with that, which is evil. And how has that changed our view culturally of law? Well, we've, we see a lot in the issue of corruption and we, we've taken and made laws to benefit ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've, we've been the creator of those laws in, instead of looking to the one that really gives us good practices and, and things to look to, uh, corruption, greed, um, you know, when you look at our, I don't want to step on the toes of the, the political aspect, but let me just mention, I think some of the greatest, um, evidences of pure corruption is in our political system. And it's not just at the federal level. It's not just a Democrat. It's not just a Republican. I don't care who it is. There's corruption all over the place. And it's because we've taken these these laws and we've tried to make them beneficial to for just a small to, small yeah. group or person. Right. And so the original, and, and, and that's incredibly true. And I think the way that, that that crept in, because in the 1700s, when the United States was founded, okay, we had something called common law. And this, this episode originally started off as the common law and, and, and God. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what common law was is a British construct, but it really had its roots in the Judeo Christian ethic. Mm -hmm. And one of the primary tenets of common law, and, and by the way, what, what, what's the most form in, for, common form, excuse me, of common law today that's referenced all the time? Oh, it's marriage. Oops. That's the wrong button, guys. I'm sorry. Common law <laughs> marriage. <laughs> So Rai Rai, the producer guy, is not in studio today, so I'm, I'm working on it. I'm sorry, guys. For those of you on audio, you're wondering what happened. Well, I, I made a boo-boo with the camera. I did. We'll let it go this time. Thank don't you. Don't, <laughs> don't do it no more. Don't do yeah, it no We'll more. have to import somebody. You, you fired. Okay. Yeah. But uh, what was common law divorce? What does that mean? It means that if, or common law marriage is if you've been together for how long? I thought it was seven years. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you've been together for seven years, it is considered a marriage. And if you want to break it up, you'll have to get a common law divorce. Okay. So common law marriage. And you have to carry yourself out as a married couple. Yeah. So it's a, it's common law is con what's considered natural law is it's commonly conflated with that. And one of the things that happened, so, so here's where it went wrong in the United States. If, if I may, it went wrong in this way. We had common law become conflated with the new sets of laws that have a nanny state. What I mean by that is this. It used to be in common law, you had to have a defendant and a complainant. There had to be an injured party. There had to be someone who was injured. Correct. And therefore, I have a complaint against Charlie because Charlie ran over my dog, and I think it was vicious. Okay, Charlie. No, not 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 true. Right. Oh, oh okay. I, but I, what I, happens now? Now I'm you've got problem. the state stepping in and saying Charlie, that they've been injured. Charlie was driving thirty miles an hour in a fifteen on a country road in the middle of the night where there are no driveways. And his wife has cut her cut her foot on a piece of glass, and he's driving her to the hospital. But we're going to criminalize Charlie. And as a neighbor, I'm going to sue him because I've got uh, physical mental stress because of that. Well, that's a different issue. So, but the issue with 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 common with common and law. I'm an injured person. With the issue with common law, <laughs> Steve, you're not helping. <laughs> the issue with common law is that the government has now stepped in and they've created an opportunity that's an issue with the with the um with the way that uh, the judicial system has allowed just yes terrible terrible frivolous lawsuits but that's a different issue before that we had an issue of the government is becoming the injured party where does that put the government 
because we just talked about the Levitical law. Who was the injured party in the Levitical law? It, it, well, I'm sorry. He, oh, the God. The, God was the complainant mm -hmm. in Levitical yeah. law. Now that the government has become the complainant. They've usurped in themselves in, in front of God. In front of God. Correct. That is the image that broke. And once that image has broken down and we yes. have put the precepts of man into the level of the precepts of God. You see, before when it was two people competing and they're saying, hey, your, your dog killed my chicken, right? Or your son killed my, uh, my, my son, that right? Before. Those are appealing to what? To natural law, to mm -hmm. God's law. You have to replace that animal that's dead. This individual killed in this, this individual. There has to be some mm -hmm. sort of penalty. Now you have a government that says, I'm going to arbitrarily set a rule. Yep. Does, does it come out of the nature of God? Does, well, uh, this, is, this is where well, man-made law. But it, the, at the same time, the, the t Old Testament also set boundaries. I mean, if you hurt somebody else's animal, there was a penalty for that. Um, if That's you, a, but, but that was an injured party. Absolutely. Would, but what if my dog kills my own chicken? Steve, you're not helping. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I would be my own injured party, right? You yep. can, you can okay. sue yourself. You can sue, sue yourself. yourself. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. I was just curious. But, so you're saying what? I, I'm, I'm, so there were two types of injuries in Old mm -hmm. Testament law. There was an individual versus an individual. M Mr. Charlie knows exactly what I'm saying. So for the viewers who are right. confused, Miss Nikki is, 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 is sitting in for you. She's batting for you because I've confused her. <laughs> um, no, and that's totally fair. If you had, so, so Old Testament law, if you have a bull that kills another farm animal, okay? Very, very, very plain Levitical law. That bull is either put down mm -hmm. and the price is paid or that bull is never allowed into a pasture again where it can do that and a price is paid. Correct. But if the bull does it a second time, the owner, if, especially if it kills an individual, the owner is put to death. So, so are it, you saying though that it only takes place if the owner complains that this has happened? Or does the recompense just automatic? Who's going to be the overseer that the the, the bill is going to get paid? They or have that to come. They have to come before the court of law, which is at the gates. Okay, Where and, you that's, have... and that's how it was laid out. And then they appealed to God's natural law. God also had laws in Levitical law. You shall bring a sacrifice at mm -hmm. this day and at this time. There were two types of laws. There were laws where there was an injured party a human injured party. And then there were laws where there was no injured party other than God. Mm -hmm. Now you have a myriad of taxes, a myriad of laws, seven felonies today. Okay. Seven felonies today, I believe is the statistic. Fact check me. Maybe it's three, maybe it's four, maybe it's 12. I don't remember what it is, By 12 but I believe it was seven felonies a day committed. Who's the injured party on all those felonies? Have I committed seven murders today? Not me today. That was five yesterday. I'm sorry. My bad. But okay. today I have not killed anyone. Okay. Not today. But the government has stepped in and said, I am the injured party. They're not appealing to the law of God, of something mm -hmm. that's real. They are creating mm -hmm. in their own image. They've set themselves up as God. Does that make sense? I know where you're going. Um, because <laughs> the answer is no, but I know okay. where you're going. So for the rest of you who might be a little bit confused here, um, my understanding is we haven't really done anything today to harm anybody. But if the government wanted to come back and say, you went five miles over the speed limit. Or, or you haven't filed this particular thing with the IRS that has no relevance to anything that you've done or haven't done, but, but you've now created this issue. And and you don't I owe the IRS money I even. Pay it's my a filing tax stamp for my. Not even. Not even. You know. I'm saying I'm saying totally frivolous. So so I have to file quarterly a sales tax. 
Okay. And quarterly, it is zero because the, the reason Correct. we got it, we we didn't go down that road. But I still have to file this. If I am late, Same. I will be fined fifty dollars. Yep. Now I haven't done anything. I have not. I don't have any sales tax to, to you pay. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't file on time. Therefore, I'm penalized. So that's a that's a that that is a less egregious version of what we're talking about. There are laws where and and I, I'm going to give you a few. Charlie's going to give you a few at the end. State of the end. That you're committing a felony every day in Texas. Every time you drive, you're committing. If you pass a stoplight, you're committing a felony. In Texas, in right. some jurisdictions, today, every time that you drive, unless you do something that is very peculiar, you are committing felonies today. If you run a stop sign? And you have done nothing wrong. No, no, no. If you – normal traffic motion, you are committing felonies. Okay? Mm. So that's my point. The state I, has created these frivolous – these frivolous things that yeah, are I just some here. absolutely off the wall. And they don't come from reality. Right. Right. And does that make sense? Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have – you're going to love mine. I do I do understand I, like mine. because okay. there was a gentleman here that was a police officer, and he was explaining to my daughter that when you go out and you drive a, your car, you are probably breaking a law every so many minutes. Yep. That every time you get in your car, you're probably breaking this law or that law. You just don't get picked up for it. And that's the point. That was so. I'm, so I, yeah, absolutely. That's the point. And and you're you're 100 correct there. Every few minutes, you're breaking you're breaking the law. And so, where does that come from? That comes from a. There is no godly standard of the law, and b. There is no godly standard that pertains to an injured party. Yep. It's and all man. That's. Laws. That's where it's come from. These laws come out of thin air. I don't remember if it was Charlie or Steve who said this, but you're basically creating out of thin air mm -hmm. the principles for these laws. And you might have a good intention when you're writing it, dear legislature, but what you're accomplishing is bondage. What you're accomplishing is damaging. And you've got what you have is... You have sinners creating laws for sinners. Corrupt, creating for corrupt. You know, I, the you know, way that I, I mean, word this. Without the North Star of Truth. And, yeah. and you've got sinners judging sinners. Which is fine if they're judging with the North Star of Truth, but they're, they're not. not. Yeah. Exactly. I think the, the one principle that I've tried to lay out to my kids and into others during some of our Bible studies is every time that there is an abuse of a law, you create more law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God created us for. He didn't want us to live under um, all just a, a, an overwhelming number of laws. That's not what he was looking for. He wants us to live in freedom. But in order to do that, you have to be appealed appeal to that North Star of truth. You have to appeal to the one that wants what's best for your heart and soul. And so we don't have time anymore to go through the Dawkins clip because we kind of got off the rails a little bit, which is great. I, I think it was a good discussion, but I just want to mention, link in the description below for Dawkins. If you want to check it out, fun link. Mm. Dawkins is now bemoaning the lack of Christianity in the UK. And, the, and, and and what he culture. says mm -hmm. is it's a fundamentally decent religion when you compare it to Islam. He says, I'm culturally Christian. And the lady goes, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, I, I like the Christmas carols. I like the mass. I like all that. That's fine. But what I don't like is the way that Islam treats women and the way that we see the increase and rise of uh, G-R-A-P uh, uh, E in the UK, how so many women are being taken and so many people are being violently stabbed in the UK because not all cultures are created equal. If mm -hmm. you have a Judeo-Christian culture, that is a good culture. That is a culture that is going to protect and save life because it's based on what? On the laws of God. It's based yeah. on the understanding of reality as it really is. Yeah. Here, 
That's the value of the Christian law. So Dawkins, I'll, I'll yeah, get you in no just a problem. second. No Dawkins problem. wants to live in this world of reality and the protections thereof without the responsibility yeah. there you go. There you go. of seceding to reality, the ground of God, you are real, and I give myself over to you. He doesn't want to say that, but he wants to live within the protections and the confines that such a reality provides, Steve. Yeah, speaking from the chair of politics, one of the, the problems uh, in reference back to what we were talking about on uh, man law, uh, the problems that we are having with man creating a lot of laws is, is the fact that we're creating laws for and against people who are law-abiding citizens. Making a hardship for instead them. Instead yeah. of the criminal. criminals. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and it seems to be an ongoing process in state and federal, um, mm -hmm. how do I want to say, the, uh, with politicians nowadays that seem to want to do things just because, let's say, for example, towards uh, firearms. Okay. One example, they're doing it against legal owners and people who don't do anything wrong, but they're not doing it against the criminals. It's the chem criminals who are creating a problem, not the law-abiding citizens. So Matt Walsh, did a, off a, Matt Walsh did a really good uh, video on this recently where, I forget, it wasn't Huntington Beach. I'm trying to remember which beach it was. They kicked off all of the yoga instructors off the beach, which, of course, you know, filled him with glee, but not, be, you know, because he finds <laughs> that, you know, the yoga ladies annoying. But he did say, here's the one thing. I will come to their defense. You have vagrants who are defecating on the same mm -hmm. soil and they are putting hypodermic needles in the sand for the kids to walk through but the yoga teachers the yoga ladies are the problem somehow and yeah. so how has the how, right how has the government is steve i'm trying to get to your chair here how has the government perverted first off where did the mandate come from for where was the first place when was the first place in the bible where god gave man the right of judge jury and executioner genesis genesis nine three through six how it started off through there how has man perverted that man has perverted it by taking it and turning it around by making it to where they make it to where say let's oh Instead of you killing someone and, and let's say like in, uh, let me pull it up here in Genesis six, whoever sheds the blood of a man by man, his blood will be shed. Pretty kind simple. Put it kind of straightforward and simple. What do they do? We're going to give you three years in prison and 10 years probation. But, what but the heck is that? But if you, if you do something against federal statute, that is just something very simple, 12, 20 years, one guy got right. 12 years. We covered this on this podcast. He got 12 years for mismanaging bodies at a funeral home. Mm -hmm. And he got 12 years in prison. By the way, I'm not saying that he shouldn't have got 12 years. I'm saying it's amazing that we have people who have off Killed. people, mm -hmm. people who have taken children and had their way with them, and they get out right. in less than five years. Or mm -hmm. or they, they don't even get anything except six months probation mm -hmm. with children. Uh, it's nuts. Uh, you know, men that do things with, with children, and they only get six months probation. Mm -hmm. Man, what kind of stuff is that? So... And the, the purpose of government, Steve, is to do what? We've talked about this many times. What is the Romans 13 purpose of government? Why does the government wield the sword? 
they wield the sword in order to protect the citizenship and to keep control of the citizenship. They're there to and enforce it, godliness. And mm -hmm. Exactly. Condone Which is, good. Is, and to condone it and to enforce what goes on that is evil, not and punish evil, punish evil. Should yep. I say not enforce it, but to punish evil. Let me, let me read that verse in Romans 13, one, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power, but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So, in wrapping up, we're going to talk about the chair of economics here, and then I'm going to ask for final thoughts. How does this shift in, in, in the structure of law? And that's where I'm, I'm trying to go. We've taken that shift in what does this God, who's immaterial, who's super material, look like? And we're trying to reach out and understand, like a blind man touching a, another person's face. That shift from reaching out to understand who God is to we as man are vying to create our own laws. What does that change about? What does that show about our change in values? What kind of values, Charlie? We've we've really lost them. What have we exalted? We've exalted the opposite. We've exalted death. We've exalted. So I, I talk about uh, the abortion. We we alter the image of people. Gender issues. Mm -hmm. Oh. We okay. we we totally pervert the image of God. We totally pervert the ways of God. We totally pervert the essence of God. That's what we're doing. And it's leading us down a path of destruction. We're, we're not able to... So, and, and I want to be careful here, folks. I, I don't want you to look at this as a, a really downer. There is a way back. The way back is to get back to God. That's, that's the issue. But when we want to make things the way that we want them as opposed to the way that God wants them, when we want to make our own ways as opposed to the ways that God has ordained us, ordained himself to, to give us those things, that's where we, we come into major issues. And the political issues that we see today, uh, how about assisted suicide? There's another one. I mean, there's all sorts of different things that have changed. And I'll tell you one of the ones on the economic front that I think is really disturbing is we see the issue of money flowing into laws being made. Mm -hmm. That, it, if there was anything that should make you really curdle, that would be it. Because now laws will be made to for those who can afford it. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's going. That's where it's going. It's because we have shifted the 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 value, the innate value. It, we talk about losing the value of the human being so often. What we've lost is the value of who God is. Yes. The fact that there yes. is an overarching lawgiver. When you relinquish from that lawgiver his duties, yes. well, now he's not there to protect you. Yep. God is dead. God is dead. What new cathedrals will we erect? What new sacraments mm -hmm. will we profess now that we, the greatest murderers of all, have killed God? Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. Yep. What will we do with this newfound freedom without God? If we <laughs> deny that God exists, what will happen? Well, we watched that happen in the 20th century. Yep. We watched how that all falls out. But I, I, I want to wrap up for the day because we are... We are a little bit long. It's going to be a long podcast. Miss Nikki, final thoughts for the day. Well, I would say that when we build 
or we lay a foundation and we build laws on, based on the principle of, of God, God's word. It is to help your society prosper. It is to help you to create a society where people have the ability equally to prosper and go forward and multiply. But then you have laws that are built on man's own wisdom. And those laws are usually to take your freedom and take uh, control of society. And there's a difference. Absolutely. So I want to come. My husband's looking. To make no, you, you're spot on. It's good. <laughs> it's good. I want to come from the chair of theology or from uh, philosophy here. And I want to go ahead and lay this out real quick. If you realize that the world that we live in is just a shadow of something that is to come. Mm -hmm. And God has given you some of the laws of the universe, as it will, your first and second laws of thermodynamics, the law of gravity, gravitational and, and, and speed of light constants in certain, in certain aspects. God has given you that. You can reach out and you can start to understand what that other world looks like. We don't understand what an electron and a proton and a neutron look like in their orbits and their shapes. We can only grasp at how they function and how they work. We don't have a good working model that we're positive, that we are 100% positive comports with reality. Hmm. God has given us a lot like an electron microscope. You can kind of bounce and you can get some ideas off of what that world looks like. That's that microscopic, that atomic world looks like on the larger scale. God has given us just these faint ghosting through the, through the shell of, of, of reality, who he is and what he looks like and the laws he gives us, gives us the moral laws. They are a reflection of that larger universe, mm -hmm. man. I really hope that we start to realize that he's given us everything we need yeah. for reality. We need to start looking at the original lawgiver. Yeah. I would say don't despise what God has given as a law. Be very careful about despising the person, casting him off. So many times, you know, we see people that want to do things. Well, I don't want to be committed to a marriage. Okay, why not? But when they look at the issue of what God says in his word, they want no part of that. I don't want to be married in a heterosexual way. Okay, well, why not? Because I want to do it this way. But do you understand why God in his word says that's not a good way to go? That's, don't, don't despise the one, don't dismiss the one that has put those things out there. Research and find out why he did that. Mm. And you might find out he loves you way more than you might have thought. Steve. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've had some um, neat realizations on a few people here uh, that have been voted into office from Texas on their voting and uh, that I've voted for in the past and I've done some more research on their uh, voting records and it really pays to in on your political stance to pay attention more on how they vote and you may like charlie says on asking people questions well how come you vote or how come you don't vote it's important and do they line up with the laws that we have that are given to us in god's word do they line up with what you believe in as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Do they follow that law? Do they vote against what it is that they line that, that lines up with what you say, but yet they say this 
but vote this way. Mm -hmm. How many do exactly that? Look at their voting records. Pay attention to what goes on. There are so many out there that do completely the opposite of what they say. Yeah. And it is so important to pay attention as people who vote on hold, those that were getting into office. Hold them to account. Exactly. And just from the chair of economics, I'll put one word in. Remember the value that God has placed on your life. Not only did he give you the law, he gave you his son. Mm -hmm. The other component to that love that we talk about with God. Right. He showed you that he is a holy, righteous, fiery being, this, this, this God that is perfect. Mm -hmm. And in his presence, you will wither. But he gave you a chance to be conformed to the image of his son, transformed by the renewing of your mind, turned into a new creation, one that could live with him in a peaceful, blissful harmony in a marriage supper with the Lamb of God, his son, co heir to eternity and glory in heaven. Remember, everything that's sin, everything that is sin, is a shallow husk, an imitation of what God intends for you. Mm. The laws of man, when they are not founded on the laws of God, are a shallow imitation. They'll claim protection, they'll claim provision, but you have been robbed. You have been robbed. Remember, the law of God is pure, it is perfect, it is sure. It is more to be desired than gold. And in keeping of them, the laws of the Lord, there is much reward as the psalmist says. With that said, if you like this podcast, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you for hundreds of thousands of downloads on the audio. Thank you for uh, all the man, views, you. all the subscribers on Rumble. Oh, if you're on man, YouTube, fantastic. good to see you. We're finally out of YouTube jail. Uh, head over to Rumble where you can actually see us. Go Rumble. On the reg. Go Rumble. Uh, with that yeah. said, we're coming up to a bit of a summer break. We'll probably be putting, we might be putting down one more episode I don't know, but for right now, we're going to take off the first part of June. We might have one more episode after this. We'll see. What kind of like break? But it's going to be a, a two break. week, a two week, a three week break somewhere in there. We'll be coming in before the end of June. Man. Okay. So we're going to take a little bit of a summer break and we'll be back. But um, with that said, we got nothing else for you. We love you so much. You have a wonderful day. Bye bye. 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 See you after the break. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. We'll, we'll see you just for now. If you are still listening, you are indeed our super listener, or you fell asleep, here is the question, or you heard what Charlie was saying. Favorite, here's the question, favorite outlandish or obscene or silly law that is on the books today? Oh, I heard this like on the radio a few weeks ago, a few months ago, maybe. Okay. Okay, Steve, this is for you, because oh. you're a cowboy. So hold, hold. You may not, it is against the law for you to shoot a buffalo from the second story of a hotel. I just want you to know that. <laughs> that is on the books. You may not shoot a buffalo from the second you'll story. Like, you'll like I, mine better. I'm going to have to unload my 4570. <laughs> so so here's here's why I said you are a felon, Miss Nikki. Dear sweet Miss Nikki is a felon because if you do not fire two shotgun rounds in the air before coming into an intersection in Texas, it's against the law. It's against the law. <gasps> oh, if you're I driving really a do. motor carriage, if you're driving a motor carriage. Now see, didn't they create a law that says you can't fire a gun in the city limits into the air? You're in a lot of trouble. Oh boy. Oh, you, you're between goodness. a rock and a hard place. Harris County. This is why I'm saying, no, this is why I'm no, saying the government depends. has created a victimless crime. It where, depends on the county. You can in Mo Montgomery County, but not in Harris County. Steve, I've got Charlie. I've got several. Go. I'm, I'm going to give fire. a couple here. In some places in Texas, you must in a public place you must have a spittoon for those that want to spit. Um, yep. That includes churches. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Not kidding. I believe you. In yeah, Port believe. Arthur, not too far from us. Yes. In Port Arthur. It is against the law to, 
I'm going to say it very politely, Biff in the elevator. Oh, my gosh. Cannot yeah. do it. <laughs> Cannot do it. I agree with I've this law. That. And I'm going to give you I'm going to give you two quick ones here. Austin, Texas. No joke. You cannot hide a pair of wire cutters. Yep. You, you know must something? have them out in the open. Yep. You want to know something? Cattle rustling. There are and, yep. probably very few places in Port Arthur that have an elevator, too. That's true. Go ahead, oh, Charlie. And then the the um, <laughs> the last one, the most hilarious one. You cannot ride a horse on the highway at night without taillights. <laughs> oh. So does that mean that you have a little little taillight swinging with the dingleberries, uh, or is that have, that, that you, you better have something that? Yeah. Here's a couple. Or you have to drill and tap okay. a couple of holes. <laughs> In Texas. There is a law that requires criminals to give their victims 24 hours notice, <laughs> either orally or in writing, explaining the nature of the crime to be committed. <laughs> Seriously. Also, okay. <laughs> Using a lasso to catch a fish is illegal in the state of Texas. That's because they can't do it. <laughs> this law might have been put in place to protect fish populations or simply as a quirky regulation. I think it was a quirky regulation. You tell us your favorite quirky regulation <laughs> sure? or bizarre thing. I, I said you're not allowed to, you cannot cross an intersection. That's right, the fire, that's right. You cannot approach an intersection right. in a motor carriage without firing two shotgun shells in the air. <sighs> if we do that, we'll get arrested. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. I, well, so, I'm gonna have to start carrying my shotgun in Montgomery County. I'm gonna, go. I'm gonna do a lasso of fish to see if somebody's gonna arrest me. <laughs> I'm giving hey, I'm giving I'm, somebody know, written notice. No, Where's the fish? No, so <laughs> we we have digressed. Four hours written notice. You can you can tell them. Too. Okay, I'm telling the fish. I'm coming with a lasso. Count me. <laughs> with that said, tell us your favorite bizarre regulation <laughs> down in the comment section below. We have nothing else for you. Truly, goodbye. Bye.